Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at these awesome barbarians from Scotia Grendel. Scruffy Crow. <laughs> okay, so as you can see I've got these on round lip bases. Uh, I don't think they came with any bases, uh, or if they did they were 20 mil, or if they did they were 20 mil squares. Um, so yeah, so these are on round bases, so they match in them with the rest of my sort of Chaos Warriors Arrow One army. As you can see, I've got them all on these 30mm round lip bases. Uh, they came with these 20mm square bases, uh, but I've got them on the round lips to match in with the rest of my Chaos Warriors army, and I think they look pretty cool on these bases. They came with these pretty interesting looking sort of wolf pelt shields. None of these work and give quite a good look. I did worry that there'd be too much fur because there's fur on their arms, fur on the shields. And all the shields are the same pattern basically, uh, which I thought would be a bit repetitive. Um, and I did think for spearmen, they'd maybe be a little bit large. Um, so what I did, I had a quick look around eBay and I found these ones uh, from a seller that mostly seemed to be selling uh, shields. I think I had them listed as Saga ones. Uh, they were a little bit smaller than I expected because I did all of the large ones, so I dread to think how small the small ones are. Um, but these are as simple as you can get, but they're quite nicely detailed. So they're just plain planks. Uh, and I've already got to work getting these on the models. And I think that gives a much more, I mean, for barbarian spearmen, I think it gives a more realistic look. Uh, they look a little bit handier to sort of move around and something you maybe have strapped to your arm uh, while still trying to use your spear, spear in both hands. So yeah, I think that is what I'm happy with. So all these guys required cleanup wise on the shields was just a little bit of a rub around the rim. Well, there was a bit of a mould line. And handily enough, the little circle in the middle here and handily enough, the little circle hole in the middle here. All I need to do is just drop a little bit of glue in there. And this is fitting perfectly onto the sort of shield nobles these guys had already. So I'm lining it up with the way his fist goes, with the bracing on the back there. And actually that just sits on there. And that would sit on there without any glue. Just an example here, this one fits on so well onto this hand. You could actually, so that's without any glue, that stays on. Uh, so yeah, with a little bit of glue, they are not going anywhere anytime soon. As I said, I'm just lining up the shields um, with the sort of line of their hands like that. So yeah, that looks cool. So I'm just finish these ones off. There we go, they've all got shields now. So as I mentioned in the uh, unboxing video, these guys required surprisingly little cleanup work. So a few little mold lines here and there, and the points on their spears were sometimes a little bit uh, wonky. I guess we'll see when I start to get some undercoat on there, but in general, uh, these were very clean models. And if you get one with a sort of good face, you can see these are very clean sculpts as well. Um, I'm a big fan of them. All right, so now I've got all the shields on, um, and I've gone around and done another quick check for mold lines. Though I'm still spotting the occasional one here and there. I'm gonna get some sand on these bases, but I'm gonna start um, by getting these little holes here. Um, Cause we don't want the sort of sand to leak through. And I'm just gonna get a little bit of this pre-mixed uh, wood filler. Standard Wilco one that I use. I'm just going to daub a bit of this in the holes, and then we'll leave that to dry overnight, and uh, and that'll give us filling these holes. It's a lot cheaper than uh, trying to use Millie put or uh, green stuff even, which I've seen used for doing this. Works out a lot cheaper than Millie put or green stuff, uh, both of which I've seen used for this. One of the most effective ways is just to get the bottom like this, push it in, let's do the other side, like that, and then we just get my finger and I'm just going to push that 
into the slots. And there we go, that's just filled the little holes. So when you've got the sand on there, you'll not even see that. If we get a little bit squeezed at the top, like this, it's easy enough just to knock off, either now or when it's dry. And then we've got a perfectly flat bit of base. Just as an aside, if it was a whole slot I was trying to fill, I would normally use either masking tape just stick a little bit over the hole and then use a sharper knife than this use the blade changing just to go around the outside and that will be fine um, glue your model onto that if you really want a good thing you can even work out where the feet are going to be and just you know, make sure you've got like a bare bit of plastic for the feet to sit on. Uh, but in my experience, I've never really had a problem with this coming apart, uh, and I've used this on hundreds of models. So yeah, so either I use a bit. That's my go-to method. Um, but if you do want that slot completely filled, I'd recommend either a matchstick's probably the best, uh, or just like a bit of cocktail stick, and you can just push that in and glue that in place like that. Um, and once again, once you've got sand over that, you're not going to see it. Um, both methods a lot quicker and easier than trying to use any kind of putty, including green stuff. Um, so that's just my little tip there. All right, next up it's the PVA. And for speed today, I'm just going to use this old uh, craft brush. And then I'm just wiping off the excess from around the edge and whack him in the bird sand. Like so. I'm running out of this actually. I do have a, a massive bag of it in the garage, so I'll have to top that back up. I'm in my garage, I've found my sand, uh, but I've not brought anything to put it in. That's annoying. Turns out there's often plus sides to being a crazy hoarder. That should be enough for me getting on with. So the glue on these guys is completely dry now. So I'm just digging them out and we're just removing any excess sand. I'm just using this sculpting tool to take any sand away from anywhere we don't want it. Like on their feet, for instance. Okay, so I've cleaned them all up and they're on my spray tray. There's 14 of them. Uh, there is one minor alteration that I want to make to my uh, banner bearer here. Um, so we'll get into that. So yeah, I noticed this guy has a sword strung across his back um, and he's probably obviously not holding it, he's holding this pole. Um, oh yeah, before I say anything else, this is just a old Chaos Space Marine plastic part. Um, and I think that looked quite good, I think that fit in with the rest of my army. Uh, the banner top was a bit sort of unfinished looking to my eye, um, so I think this works quite well. Just popped it on there. Uh, but yeah, so this guy has a sword strung across his back, uh, but there's no hilt on it which I thought was a bit weird. Um, so I checked the website, and as you can see, there's no hilt on that one either, um, which seems odd. Uh, but it shouldn't be too much work to fix. We're going to do a very basic one. OK, so that's gone drastically wrong. I was trying to drill a hole uh, in the hilt here, and I was doing quite well, uh, and then it sort of exploded out. So this is very soft metal. As you can see, even just trying to hold this banner, in one place, as because it's a warp, it's very bendy, uh, and that's probably not helped here. Um, so I'm going to try and clean this up, and I've been looking at these as well, um, and I think I might try and use one of these dwarf uh, axe hammerheads. Um, so give me a second, and I might try and hash something together, and I'll tell you how I did it. Okay, so I neatened up the mess I made here. And I also filed off the little ball that was on the front there. Uh, I quite like that detail, but I messed it up when I tried to do the drilling. And then I filed across the top. I've added the uh, the haft off this little axe. So the section in between where his hand was and the axe head, which was fairly similar to this one. 
I've sort of curved off one edge and flattened the other. So I've stuck that on there and let that glue dry and we'll do the tiniest amount of green stuff work. My original idea was more a, uh, a wire pin in there uh, and then do the whole thing in green stuff or even try and pin something like this on. Um, but I think this is going to work quite nicely. Okay, so here's my minuscule amount of green stuff. And I'm going to start on the inside here. I'm actually going to use this to add a bit of depth to the back so this handle doesn't look quite as wide. And any excess in there can be just disguised as fur. Okay, that's the inside. Filling in that gap's going to make it all into one model a bit better. Now I just need a, a thin layer of all the way across this sort of damaged part on the back. Okay, so we've added in all the details we had before. Uh, so this sort of strap detail and then the hilt. And then I've got the, the smallest ball I could make. Oh, that's far too big. Okay, so an even smaller ball. Back over the middle of the hilt. There we go. Now he's got a hilt and I'm pretty happy with that. So yeah, there he is, back with the rest of his squad. Um, and now we can get some paint on them. Okay, that's a layer of Halfords Black. I'm going to give him a little dust with this uh, Halfords Grey. Okay, so now we've got the undercoat on. I'm going to put my first couple of colours down. I'm going to start with this uh, P3 Idrin Flesh. Uh, using one of these reclaimed makeup brushes. I'm going straight out the pot. This is quite a thin paint anyway. So I'll show you on this guy. Just get him all over. I can get in every nook and cranny. And I'm not worried about what's going to be skin. Uh, but I also use this on any wood bits as well. And I've kept this kind of thin, so there's a couple of little streaks. Um, but two coats like that, and I'll have a really solid base coat. And because we've got a nice lot of amount of bristles, doing quite a few passes, we get it on nice and thin without it covering up any of the details that we want to keep. So there's not an awful lot of skin on these guys, mostly just their face and hands. Um, I think their arms are meant to be bare. Yeah. Um, but I'm also using this, as I said, on the wood, so the spear and shield are both getting the same colour. Okay, so the next step with these guys is going to be some of this Midland Flesh. And I have busted out my a normal size brush, which is a Rosemary Co. Zero, and my wet palette for this. Do some proper painting. So I've got this thinned down a little bit now. And I'm going to start off by just splashing some little shapes, only raised parts, on the skin. And then almost even more watered down. I'm just going to drag that paint around. And really the only bits we want to leave uncovered on this skin at the end of this stage is going to be the sort of creases. So you like the gaps between his fingers here. All right, last thing for the night. These guys are going to get a nice coat of this uh, Reitland Flesh Shade. And this is why the previous coat didn't need to be the neatest thing in the world, because this will hide a multitude of sins and give us the basis for all the shading that we want to do. Okay, so I'm working my way through these guys and I'm re-highlighting with the Midland Flesh here. Uh, so as you can see on this arm, I'm just going back over the sort of muscle and raised areas. Uh, and we're just picking out things like their lips and their noses. So whereas last time we went in with the Midland Flesh, we literally only left the very gaps. Now we're covering probably only about 50%. So it's particularly effective in places like here. So we've got some muscles, just highlight that. 
on there. And we're using it even more watered down now. So we've got this sort of transparent effect. And anywhere where we do want it a bit stronger, I can just layer that up. Uh, next up, I'm going to finish off the skin with this flayed one flesh. I'm still making use of this wet palette over here just to get that nice and thin. I want a kind of semi transparent layer. And we're just concentrating once again in the middles of everywhere we just did, standard highlighting. It's just the tip of his nose, the very edge of his eyebrows. Less is more, I think, with this. Uh, and then on his hands, we're just going to do his knuckles. Okay, so that's all my skin tones done. Uh, now to start on some of the other details. All right, as I uh, tend to do sometimes when I'm doing a batch paint like this, I got one guy. Oh, I've made a little smudge there, and he's touching up. Uh, but basically, this was just to test out the color scheme uh, and see if there's enough sort of variation. Um, the bone's not finished. I think we need some more, a brighter red highlight around the bottom of this tuft. Um, but all in all, I think for just general guys, I think that's going to work. Uh, I'm happy with the way that's looking. Uh, so I'll use this guy as like a key to, uh, to paint the rest of them off. So I'm not experimenting at 15 at a time. Um, I've got an idea of where I'm going with this paint job. Okay, in order to match my test mini, I'm going to go around and do all the fur. Uh, so this will be sleeves on some models, uh, hats on some of them, um, and there's even some boot tops. I'm going to do all of that in this Storm Vermin fur, I think, as the first layer. So this is going to be quite an arduous layer, so I'm just going to put some Netflix on or some music and just uh, chill out and work my way through it steadily. So there's the grey highlight on. Now I'm going to give the very edges of all those fur parts a little tickle with the white. Some of them's done with the white on these guys, and all I'm doing is just around the edges of where the fur is, just a few little brushes. The shoulders there, just anywhere where it kind of stands out a little bit further. Around the edges. Okay, so I think the next messy bit is going to be the metal down here. Uh, so I'm going to get on with that now. Uh, so that'll be around their sort of skirts and on the shields and on the tips of their spears as well. All right, we're plowing along with these little fellas now. We've got uh, the shields, the areas around the skulls on their chests painted black, uh, hair painted black and mustaches in this case, painted black where needed. I've also started a little bit of red on this uh, banner bearer. And I just noticed that I was missing a spike on this side, which is somewhat annoying. I might have a dig around to see if I replace this with, but it'll do for now. It still looks pretty cool. Maybe you lost a spike burying it in someone's head. Not a lot of progress this evening. Just highlighted the bases again in Manoth White Base. Uh, I went and filled in their trouser sections here. It's only a tiny little section on each model. Uh, and I used this Great Coat Grey for that. Uh, it's just, just something non-offensive so they didn't really pop out. Uh, and the shield, I used the same Great Coat Grey on the shields. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's just uh, bring out the there you go, bring out the wood grain a little bit. I'm now going to go around all the metal um, and the shields, sort of yeah, so the spike up here, and probably even around the little trousers bits I did in some null oil now. I've also gone around and touched up all of their jerkins um, and the tops of their little hats with rhinox hide. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a rhinox hide. XV88 combo. I'm going to use that to sort of highlight up the jerkins, possibly with a little bit more contrast than this one because that's kind of gone a bit muddy uh, to get a lever effect. And I'll be putting this on their jerkins and shoes. And then I'll go around with just some XV88 and do the strappings on their boots, uh, bracelets, belts, anything that looks like it might be a different leather to their main sort of armor. Okay, next up is all of the wood and bone in this Agra Third Shade. So the bag at the back to the shield is a nice easy one. Bring out that wood grain. Uh, all the leather and bone on their belts. Get those low lights in. Uh, the spears is where it makes one of the biggest differences because we've got that quite hi highlighted. And then we look at that. That's really 
Really making a nice difference on those. And I think that's really bringing the moulds together. Okay, I finished these guys up. Um, finishing touches was uh, a little bit of Menoth white highlight around the ends of any bits of bone. Um, we did some Quicksilver uh, over the metal, so making their chain mail stand out. I've highlighted a couple of bits of the leather back up with the XV88 after the wash, uh, just to get a bit of a few different shades in there. I've gone round the shields on their chests just with a little edge highlight of the Great Coat Grey, just so it wasn't flat black. Uh, and I've painted their eyes in uh, with some black and then just two dots of white uh, where I could. However, a lot of them sort of lost their eyes under their hats. All in all, I am really happy the way these guys have come out. They're really nicely detailed miniatures. Um, they're just like the right sort of level of detail. And for me, they've got a proper sort of middle hammer feel to them. Despite the fact that the sculpts themselves don't look anything like anything I can recall Games Workshop making, uh, I still feel like if they had made these, uh, it wouldn't look out of place, which is what I'm hoping because they're obviously going to go with this army, uh, which is pretty much all Games Workshop. So uh, there's 15 of them here. Uh, I can only use 10 in a unit for Warlords of Everyone. So they will be also supporting these two uh, ballista that you saw in my last video. So that'll be three per one of these. I think these guys look really nice next to these. I think that works quite well. Helps that I've used a few of the same colors uh, to match these in. And they scale quite nicely, I think. Over the next few weeks, I'm gonna be continuing with my Barbarian theme. Uh, I've picked up a model to lead this band to make him a unit of 10 again. And that's this Wolfric the Wanderer. Um, you might recognize this guy. He's part of the uh, GW uh, Warriors of Chaos range, so he'll fit in quite well uh, with the rest of the ones in the army. And I think, although he's a lot bigger, I mean, I've put him on a 40 mil base even, than these guys, he actually scales quite nicely. And I think once he's all painted up in the same colors, he will look like quite a, a good, cohesive leader for these guys. These guys will also uh, be getting some huts to live in, uh, which you'll have seen if you watch me unboxing these guys. I've not, not done much with these yet, uh, but I'll finish these up. I've also got another terrain little idea uh, to go with those huts and these guys uh, to make a nice little barbarian encampment. And I've even got a monster in mind uh, that I'll do a video on to make this into a nice tidy little sub force. So if you like what I did here and you want to see me more of these minis, um, remember to subscribe, look back at my other videos. If you've got any questions, stick them down in the chat or come and say hi on the Discord. And as ever, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.